Hey guys, it's your girl, Chef Joya, and this is episode four of Plant Girl Magic. And I have a lovely guest with me today, no other than my <laughs> favorite person in the whole wide world, my mentor, my, was my fairy god, cookie mother, whatever you want to call her, but you all know her as Chef Lisa Brooks. Hey! Hey, hey everyone. Hey, Joya. Thank hey. you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. This is I am so excited for you to be here. So many people are excited for you to be here. There's so many questions. I have like a paper full of questions oh, that people wow, want to okay. ask you and things that, you know, I already know, but I right. want the whole world to know about you. Right. So Chef Lisa Brooks, so where are you from? Tell me your background and all that good stuff. I am from Charlotte, North Carolina. I am a country girl. You know, Charlotte's kind of considered a city now, but... 50 years ago, trust me, it was country. So I consider myself a country girl. I'm um, born, born and raised in Charlotte. And uh, I'm like the baby of seven girls. And mm. we have a huge family, um, lots of cousins. And, you know, having Sunday dinners at my grandmother's house is where I fell in love with cooking, food. It's just, I mean, that's my comfort place. That's the place I feel loved. I feel like I love people the best you know mm -hmm. so i mean that's how i grew up just surrounded by family always cooking in the kitchen um i did go to carolina i was lived in chapel hill for like 22 years and uh working corporate world and stuff after school and um got married had my son mm -hmm. um at 21 so um so then i then i got divorced so i was a single mom <laughs> um through much of my corporate career and I was just miserable in that career, literally. But like, wait, 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 because yeah. that is literally my next question. Oh, is it? Okay. It is literally my next question you because... Know, I, get to, I, get to, I get to run in my mouth. Listen, but no, that's a great thing because it's going to like just flow. But how did you become a chef? Like, this is what people always want to know is how you became a, a chef. chef. Yes. Yeah, well, um, it was, <laughs> was kind of divine intervention, really, because I never thought about being a chef. Never thought about cooking for a living. And really, to be honest, Joy, I didn't think cooking was like a gift or a talent. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody could cook. Yep. I thought everybody's <laughs> mama taught me how to cook. I thought everybody's grandma. You know, I just, I really didn't know it was something special. Mm -hmm. um, until people just started saying, you know, I would always, even when I was in college, I was in Chapel Hill, I would have um, my friends over for like Sunday dinners. Mm -hmm. I would keep, try to recreate the Sunday dinners. And and then later on, my coworkers and friends. Just anybody like well, Sunday, people know they come put their feet under my table, they're gonna get fed. Um, and and then, you know, people just going on and on about the food and all that. Um, but it's still it's like more of a hobby, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't until I was kind of at my wit's end in the corporate world, like really physically stressed, it's a super stressful job. And uh, and I was like, man, I was like, just pray, like God, you gotta get me out of here. Like mm -hmm. you gotta get me out yeah. of here. Like what? But I had to work my way up in that company. Right. Like single black mom. You know what I mean? And I had worked my way up into like upper level management. So I'm like, how am I going to, you know, transition to something else? And to be honest, I don't know if I want to transition into the same thing. Okay. And uh, so. You just knew I, you wanted out. You didn't. I know it, I wanted out. And okay. I had no idea what else I could do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just heard, you need to cook. And I was like, what? What? How am I going to make money doing that? You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I was making six figures a year. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, uh, how that's gonna work, right? But um, but it worked. I listened, and after I heard that, after I heard cook, then it's like everybody started telling me, which mm. to me is like sometimes how God speaks to 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 me mm. is that it won't just be, I mean, it'll be like, oh, suddenly then I see the same thing said on TV or the same thing said by another person, okay. and it just like it keeps coming at me from different places. I was like, always wondering. People say they hear God speak to them. It's like, do you? actually hear the voice or do you just different signs and things you pick up it's just, i mean in the way that the life is moving like yeah for me i mean the real i mean for me it's like something will just pop into my mind it's almost like a download like what mm. where did that come from okay and then because sometimes you, i don't know if, is this me you know what i mean mm -hmm. is it me saying this or is it you saying this you know right. what i mean right. but then the, when those confirmations start coming in yeah. i went to a brunch like the very next week and um, and the ladies at the brunch were like, so it wasn't just like, oh, this is good. This is good. They actually were saying, you should cook for a living. Mm -hmm. Like all of a sudden, after all these years I've been cooking, they were saying like, you should cook for a living. You should cook for a living. And then, um, when I asked, I asked, I asked God how I could do it. And I heard 
say, just turn, just don't worry about it. Just turn and walk in that direction. Right? Mm. And I was seeing a therapist at the time because all the stress I was under, like, oh, oh goodness, you know, you know going yeah. to therapy. Yeah. And this is like, you know, an Asian lady, a scientist, right? Like she's a psychiatrist. So I don't oh, know wow. if she had a belief system or anything like that. But she literally said that exact phrase in our session. She said, I was like, well, you know, I've been thinking about making a change. She said, you know, don't worry about it. Just turn and walk in that direction. Oh, yeah. She said the exact phrase. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, all right, then. That was kind of like, like I'm the, listening. Yeah, okay, all right. And you got this little Asian, you know, woman, a, a doctor, you know, uh -huh. of science, uh -huh. saying the same thing God told me. I was like, all right, oh, yeah. all right, then. Yep. It pretty much sealed the deal. I was like, okay, this right. is really you saying this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's exactly what I did. I just turned, I just turned. I started walking in the direction. So I started doing research, looking mm -hmm. for what type of food jobs I could do because I knew I wasn't going to work in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was at that time 40, well, technically 39 years old. Okay. And, uh, you know, I wasn't going to be working 60 hours a week on a line or something like that. Right. So you just knew, okay, first of all, let's, let's bring it here. Okay. So you knew that even though you were like, let's cook, you were like, I'm not working in a restaurant. Right. So what made I you say, that. I'm not working in a restaurant? Knew that. Okay. Okay. I mean, I knew, I never, I never, I mean, when I was 16, I worked in a little fast food place for, okay. for a little while. But other than that, I never worked in a restaurant. But, I mean, I've heard, you know, I'm immersed in the food world, like watching the Food Network and all this stuff. And Absolutely. I see the hustle and bustle in, mm -hmm. in the restaurants in the back of the house and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, that just seemed like a hectic life that I did not want. Yeah, like when people ask me the same thing, it's like, why would I do that to myself? Not saying like, not discouraging anybody else that love the restaurant industry, not right. saying anything like that. But it's like, I know the way I'm set up and the way my personality is set up. I don't think it's going to match with a restaurant style environment. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like. Same for me. Ooh. I mean, God bless the people who run restaurants. Yes. Because I'm up in there. You know yes. Because I mean? you run a whole team. I'm We're going to get in there. there. We're going to get in there. You know what I mean? I'm coming to all the restaurants. You I'm do. Like, hey, you definitely. I go out You, you definitely go to yeah, a so, lot of restaurants. So, so and you God. run a whole <laughs> team and we're going to get into all that as well. <laughs> yeah. But it's just but like. It just wasn't for me. I mean, I just knew that. I knew that up front. Like, there's yeah. no way. Yeah. And uh, so I just literally researched. Like, I Googled, like, food jobs. Mm -hmm. And I found a food stylist. Okay. Right? And I have been a graphic designer. Yes. You know, in my past. Okay. So I was that like, so I, could, cool. I could totally do food styling. Yeah. Right? I was like, I could do that. You know what I mean? Like, really learn how to. Like for photography or magazines, so I thought, yeah. that'd be cool, you know. And then I saw the idea of a personal chef, and that was kind of like, oh, what is that? Wow. I didn't know. I mean, I I had heard of a private chef. Yes. Like somebody who just mm -hmm. works full time for like a billionaire or a celebrity right. or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'd never heard of a personal chef like this concept of you have several clients, you just go into their house. At that time, it was just do, like thinking of it just to do meal prep. Right. Like you go to one family one day, you spend like four hours in their kitchen. You know, they're going off to work. You got your AirPods in. You're just cooking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At peace. And then the next day, you go to a different client's house. So I was like, oh, that'll work. Like four clients a week. You know, I'm doing the math. You know? <laughs> and uh, like that's a life I could I could love. Absolutely. So I knew that. So I said, okay. Um and I, and I started looking up culinary schools, and, like, there's three in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I'm going to move back home okay. to Charlotte because that's where the culinary schools are. And uh, researched and found that um, CPCC was really the best culinary school so, in Charlotte. And let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What made you go to CPCC instead of Johnson & Wells? Because everybody's Johnson & Wells <laughs> culinary. <laughs> boop, bop, you going to make me say this? I am. Now? Listen, this is a podcast. Mm. Every the this is Chef Joy's life and the realness uh, that comes with it. it. I okay. am. I mean, hey, I have employed and mentor a lot of people, and I take interns from local culinary schools. And I can say from that side of the coin, from that experience of seeing what people know when they come out of school, the program at CPCC is way more hands on. Mm -hmm. There's a, a, like a like almost four times the food budget uh, than a, than a Johnson Well student. So so say for example you're in class and mm -hmm. like today we're gonna learn how to break down lobsters. Okay? Yeah. So I might at Johnson Wells you might be in a group of six around a table breaking down a lobster. At CPCC you just can keep grabbing them and like breaking them down like two or three oh, a person. Oh wow. You know what I mean? So wow. it's not but, like it's and not, that was more expensive, right? That's what that's what oh four, like ten times. Oh, it would cost, goodness! At that point, and that was what twelve years ago. It would have cost me fifty six thousand dollars 
to get a degree from from uh, Johnson and Wales. Wow. And it cost me about five thousand dollars <gasps> at CPCC. Whoa. So and CPCC is accredited. So when you graduate, you already have you just by graduating that program, you're already um, a certified culinarian with the American Culinary Federation. Boom poppy. Johnson Wells is not accredited through HC. No, 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 no. I did not know no. that. And it's just a choice. Not that it's not a good school. No, not that it's, it's a choice not, but they that's... make to not go through that process, right? Wow. So if you graduate from Johnson Wells, you'd have to then seek your ACF certification out, you know, after you graduate yourself. So you pay more money and still have to seek <laughs> Make it make sense. That part. Make that make sense to me. Oh. And I've hired people. Mm-hmm. Or I've, you know, or, or mentor people, a couple from Johnson Wells. Yeah. And um and they um, you know, will have these sixty thousand dollar student loans and they're working on a line at eight fifty dollar eight eight fifty an hour. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like, what are you how are you gonna pay that off? Uh, Do you know what I mean? So it's just yeah, but at the time I did the research and I found out that they were I saw the math on the, the numbers. Right. And then I saw that C P C C was accredited and I was like like, am I missing something? Right. This is life. like a no brainer to me. Right. So, yeah. Um, I knew CPC was one of the best community colleges in the country. So, yeah, that was a, that was kind of a no brainer. So, I decided to go to school. Mm-hmm. And people said, You've been cooking all your life. You know, you, you've been about 40 years old. Why would you go to culinary school? Like, you know how to cook. You've been cooking your whole life. And uh, you'll be, I'll be 43 by the time you graduate. And I was and? like, I'll be 43 anyway. Right. <laughs> In three years, I'll be 43 anyway. So You're I could right. be 43 and still not have a degree. Mm-hmm. Or I could be 43 and have a degree. Right. And why was that important to me? Because mm-hmm. I knew that the clientele I was going after all gate was mm-hmm. going to be the ultra elite mm-hmm. type of client. Right. So you already yeah. had made it up in your mind, like, this is who I'm going for. I know yes, what I'm doing. Absolutely. I knew it was going to be a very specialty service. It was going to be a very high end clientele. And I just, I've always been, as a young black girl, in America, okay, I was always taught. My dad and my mom always taught us to be. We had to be better. Mm-hmm. We had to be better than everybody else. You have to be smarter. You have to be faster. You have to be. You know, you have to speak properly. You have to dress properly. You have to. You know, um, you know, just do things like with the intent of excellence. And so, um, I don't. I didn't want to have to be like. You know, when people say, "Oh, where'd you go to school?" I'm like, "Well, I just, I'm self-taught." I don't want. I don't want, I don't want that. Mm-hmm. I want to be like, "Yeah, I have a." A, it's a degree in culinary arts. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's another question that's coming up too. too. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because, I, matter of fact, I'll just bring it up now because I you know when I started, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm self-taught, grandma taught, mentor taught, you know, yep. community taught, and I was like, I can't call myself a chef. Like, oh my gosh. Wow. So I know, but I know like from your understanding when you were coming into this culinary world, mm-hmm. you had a different view and then when you know, when I came along in the picture, it's a totally different view. So we're going to get to there. I just wanted to bring right, that right. up while we were but talking no, about it at that moment. that point because that's a good point. Yes. Okay. So you got into culinary, you graduated, you did your thing. Yeah. Now, were you cooking like while you're in school? Oh, I, I, I had my business license. I had my business. I had my website. Like, I, like, I'm a Leo, okay? Like, right. I play game. Like, that part. I, like, my business was established before I stepped foot mm-hmm. in culinary school. I, oh, And I so know, that's when right. I moved to Charlotte, which was May 20th of 2010, okay? She remember the date, child. I do because this is all a God story. Because on May 22nd, 2010, I cooked for my first family. Mm. Hello. That part. You know, I mean, how, how, how is that not confirmation? Yeah. That because uh, yeah, Cause, you know, because all you know in those months, it wasn't like I was like, oh, I wasn't worried. And it's I not continued. social media wasn't even big back then oh, either. No, no, social media wasn't even a thing. It wasn't even so. like a thing. Yes. I don't even know. We had Facebook, but it, it was, wasn't like yeah. using it for business. It nah, wasn't like really. that. It wasn't like I that. I think I even I, I think I joined Facebook maybe two thousand eight. Oh wow! Right. Oh, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it really was not like it wasn't even about that. Yeah. And. uh I mean, I just, you know, I'd been in corporate world and I'd been in corporate world for 18 years. So I mm-hmm. had a lot of leadership and management experience. But then also I had kind of been a hustler my whole life. When I say hustler, I mean like, you know, in elementary school, I was the one selling cinnamon sticks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or, or like selling bubble gum and candy, you know what I mean? Like 
Um, I used to like paint T-shirts and like my mom would take me to the flea market to sell my T-shirts. Yes. Or um, what else? I had a whole line of uh, all natural hair, bath, and beauty products. I was like trying to be like a little Carol's daughter at the time, oh. like making stuff out of essential oils. Yes. And so I always, I was meant to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. This is about, I mean, just from the time I was a little girl, I, I was gonna be a businesswoman. Right. Some kind. So it's just you know, so it was just all of my life experience fell into place into into this new life, this mm-hmm. personal chef life. It's like I was able to pull from everything I had done, even from the graphic design mm-hmm. part of my life, the corporate leadership part of my life, um, even the fact that I had been a pampered chef consultant mm-hmm. for seven years. Yes. That's what taught me how to speak and cook at the same time. Okay, yeah. Doing so pampered <laughs> chef parties. Y'all know pampered chef parties, you go and you're, like, you're selling cooking equipment, basically. Now, right? you were doing that before you went to culinary school? You... Yeah, I was doing that back in my childhood. So, you, it, it, the funny thing is, like, so you were doing things that was preparing you for the career you were, that had you no had idea. and had no idea that had you were no doing idea. That is had amazing. No idea. Then that's a word for somebody. Yes, it is. Because, you know, I had no idea that, you know, I look back on it, it's like, damn, I was mm-hmm. really, because I was getting prepared and the reason you met me during, and I know we'll talk about it, you met me during the Food Line stage show. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. I would never have been able to do that mm-hmm. without having been a pamper chef consultant. Oh, and wow. learning to talk and cook at the same time. Yeah. You know, uh, we I mean, because I'm like, you know what, let's just jump over that because <laughs> how did you even, okay, when you landed your gig with Food Lion, do you remember how and when? Because I know I, I came in way years after you were here. So how did you land that gig with okay, Food Lion? Okay, so I was on Thumbtack.com. Like, I was registered <laughs> on Thumbtack. Okay. You know, when I started out, that's how I, like, got clients. So Thumbtack's like where you, you know, mm-hmm. you don't want to find anybody to do anything for you on Thumbtack. Um, so I listed, listed my business on as a personal chef. On there, and now keep in mind the industry was still in its infancy, so there were not a ton of personal chefs. Mm-hmm. So Food Line actually contacted me through um, Thumbtack to say, "Hey, we, you know, we're looking for people to do like food demonstrations, you know, stage work, um, recipe development, stuff like that." And um, they want, they just wanted to know if I was interested, in them. and then I said yes, and they called me in for a. It's an interview, but it was more like a tryout or a stage. Like mm-hmm. I had to like cook for them and speak about it. They tried to see I had that presence. Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course you did. Right. Of course I that. Um, so I did that for seven years. Just, I mean, it wasn't a full-time job. It was like a, mm-hmm. I don't know what you call it. It was just like a gig. Right. Uh, to, but it was cool because we would travel around. Right. Um, the East Coast, at least. We would travel around and do these shows, like the Southern Women shows and North Carolina Seafood Festival. Mm-hmm. I did some couple of beer festivals for them. So it was really, I mean, it was, that was a cool experience. Yeah, like, Cause I actually met, you know, I, y'all talk, you know, I talk about Chef Lisa all the time, like <laughs> all the time. And it's like, I met her through the Food Lion program and I chased her for like an entire year. Um, Cause even before that, like I did like a lot of promo modeling. I was what you would call like a promotional model, brand ambassador. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to be out there just being one of the pretty girls handing out samples and this, that, and the third, but no, I was in the back collecting eight dishes just so I could find a reason to talk to them, right? I just wanted to be around the chefs. I always loved cooking. I got a lot of the same similar story, cooking for my friends, this, that, and the other. I just always took to cooking, and I had never heard of a personal chef. Um, I didn't know what a personal chef. I heard a private chef, like yep, you said. Yep. And then when she said she was a personal chef, I'm like, okay. And I'm like, can you mentor me? And I still remember the first thing you said. What? You what were I like... Say? You was like, I'm not going to pay you. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> I didn't want the money. I just wanted to learn. And so, but even even after that was like another year before she actually, um, before she actually, you know, see me. And I just remember, I remember the day, I think we were in, Sav- it was either Savannah or Augusta. Um, it, was, it was one, it was, we was in Georgia. Savannah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. And I had been talking to her, you know, here and there. And then just one day she just looked at me. She was like, she was going outside on a break. And she was like, what'd you say you're doing again? Come with me. And she just took me outside and just started talking. And that's how, you know, like we me and her engaged. We actually engaged. And I was like, oh, she's listening. And she was like, okay, we'll just set up a time and whatever talk and blah, blah, blah. And I remember I had this menu. I had made this website. It was off of Vista Print and things of that nature. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, I make this, that, and the third. And she was like... Well, I'm looking at this. I still remember you. It's like, I'm looking at this. It just sounds like, can you really even do all of this? And I was just like, what? 
I was like, okay. I said that. You said that. Oh, God. You said that. What was on there, though, Joya? It was probably a whole bunch of stuff that... But it's stuff that I do. I know, but it wasn't a vegan website. I know. But I wasn't vegan at the time. Remember, I was, I was, I was, um, I wasn't vegan at the time. I was like, okay. And you was like, okay. Well, when we get back, you know, let's set up a time and come show you, you know, come talk to you. So, so I you, came and talked to you. But you made food for us. You brought in vegan something. Well, I, I well, bought I it. I mean, the one time I brought in something, it was good the first time. And then sometimes something I brought in, it was so saucy. You nah, were like, nah. <laughs> you're like, this is too saucy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm okay. An person, y'all. She was like, mm-hmm. I'm honest. This is just too salty or whatever. <laughs> and so when I came to when I came to finally meet you, and we talked, and you're like, so what you want to do? And I'm like, do 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 whatever, whatever. And you're in the middle of cooking. I think you were doing like a meal prep, yeah, like a catering gig. Yeah, or some you were yeah, busy. Yeah. And then I was like, okay. I was and you were going vegan at the time. You were doing like That's a vegan right. diet. I was going. I was doing a vegan diet. You were going vegan at the time, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna bring you back some food. And then mm. that's when I came back the very next Woo! day. <laughs> you talk about mind blown, honey. <laughs> she brought me some curry chicken. Remember I will that? never forget the curry chicken ribs. Yes, I brought you some ribs and uh, the, the raw ribs, lasagna. Cheese, the raw lasagna. I remember that raw lasagna because yes. you was drinking <laughs> the raw lasagna. I was like, <laughs> I'm literally picking this food apart, y'all, like, picking it apart, like, texturally. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, how is this not chicken? Like, you're telling me this isn't chicken. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even, like, it just tastes good. I mean, you could curry anything, right. right? You know what I mean? But it actually had the texture of, like, chicken. And I was like, okay, wait a minute. Stop the press. Time out. Okay. You didn't tell me you was, like, a magician. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> Once I tasted that food, I was like, okay, time out. Whole mm-hmm. new game plan. Mm-hmm. This is what you this this is what you fenced to do. Right. right? Did I not? Do. This is what yes. you fenced to do. Yes. You're about to be a vegan chef. And I was like, no. She was like, absolutely not. <laughs> she said, I do not want to be put in a box. I do not want to be put in a box. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be, you mm-hmm. know. And I was like, you are going to be in the box. Are you going to own, own the that. box? Yes. You're going to own that you're box. You're going to own the box. Mm-hmm. I said, you do want to be in the box. Are you going to own that box? Yes. I told her. I told her all this, y'all. I said, I said you're going to be. I said, you're going to be a celebrity chef. You're going to be going all over the country. Did I not? <laughs> you did. I, you I told did. her all this. I saw it all. I just it's saw like, so it she, all. As soon as she ate the food, she just had a vision. I saw the whole journey. <laughs> I did. I did. I and believe you. First, I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> and all throughout that next year, her, which is basically her first year in business where I was really mentoring her heavily or whatever. And um, it's like, as things start happening, you... you one, one, you know, one contest, one right? Mac and cheese but contest. right, because remember, you even, you know, I tell people like I made that recipe like thirty different times, and I remember, you know, being able to call you and be like, "Hey, chase this," and you, you play off of that. I remember you going to the store and you're getting items and be like, "Okay, let's try it with this," because yeah. that's when you had Chow had came out with a tomato cayenne cheese. Yes, honey. She was the biggest. Was like, do they even make that cheese anymore? Yes, I haven't seen do. it. Yes, they do. Okay, I gotta find it. Well, this, yeah. I, I yeah, that. they do. Is it, it's not. It's not. Is it called tomato cayenne? Is it? What was it oh. called? I thought it was. I think it was called tomato cayenne. But yeah, it, but was, anywho, it was almost like a. But we were playing. Yeah, we were playing chat. off each other until we got it right, and it was like this the one. Like that's it. This the I was one. Like, I was like, <laughs> I think you were using almond milk. I was like, right. use, I think I just you used told me, rice milk. You told me use rice milk, and I was like, it tastes like water. Like, yeah, but rice milk has no. Like it, it, I mean, it doesn't lend any kind of flavor. I don't right, know where, but it was too thin. You, it was very thin. But how did I end up coming up with cashew? Um, well, cashew was another one that doesn't really have a yeah, flavor. Yeah, it's no, thicker. It was thicker. It's thicker. Yeah. But, um, I mean, we just, we were just. Yeah, and like I did like 30 different times. And like I said, it ended up coming and ended up oh, winning. So, and oh my gosh. Oh, that was like, when she won that mac and cheese. I know, you were there too. It was like. Game over. It was game over, y'all. I mean, it was like, pew, like mm-hmm. the takeoff. And mm-hmm. then, like, all throughout the year, or like the next couple years, I'd be calling, I'd call her, text me, like, I told you this was going to happen. And I, I, whenever mm-hmm. she got on something, she was on the bus, we tasted, I said, I, you know, I told you this was going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, always. I'm calling her, I'm like, yeah, you know, I told you. She was like, I know, I know. Always. I told, I, I told you all this was coming. So, you why did. are you acting surprised? Why are you acting like, you don't know. Like I already mm-hmm. told you, this was all gonna happen. You did. It is. It's just. It's just I amazing. I had tasted vegan food 
Since I know you. Years. I remember you saying it was this one place. I'm not gonna say the name. She was saying like this was a, like they had like amazing vegan food, and I was like, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> Girl, no. And like, it's I the speech of what you said that you like cooking as a gift. I just thought what I, I was like, I knew I knew how to cook. I knew I knew how to make vegan food, but I didn't know what I was doing was so different oh than what everybody else was doing. It, I was like, everybody like can cook like this. Day. No, it's not. But that's day. what I thought. I, I know this uh, now. <laughs> but I mean, it's like, it was just cardboard before or something. But you thought it was good cardboard. Well, put it this way. <laughs> put it this way. I mean, if you are, see, when I first started doing, I would do stints of, of vegan. Like, it was almost like fasting. Mm-hmm. Like, I would say, okay, I'm going to be vegan for 40 days or something like okay. that. Okay. So, that's how I was, I was going to. And I had this really good friend, uh, Chandrell, who was a vegan at the time. And she was a raw vegan. Ooh. So, she taught me how to make, like, the carrot tuna mm-hmm. and um, um, just some other quick things. But so, so, because she was a raw vegan... I pretty much started doing things like her way and doing like more raw vegan stuff. And, mm-hmm. you know, if I did do bread, I would do the sprout up grain breads. And so I was eating that kind of way. So having the thought of even having macaroni and cheese and mm-hmm. ribs and curry chicken, like that wasn't even like a thing. Right. So when I found a restaurant here that had like macaroni and cheese oh, okay. and cornbread. And like, meatloaf. Oh, and... I was like, oh my God. You right. know what I mean? Like I can have these things, right. you know, on my diet. Um, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh it was like that was just out of my desperation for some mm-hmm. um something that felt familiar and comforting right you know and, and and now it's just like i mean right because you you just kind of like you kind of knew you were going to make a sacrifice in taste yeah to eat this way yeah that's that's kind of like that was just, I feel like that was always kind of like the understanding. Yeah. That, is that you're gonna, you're not, you know, you want to do this to be mm-hmm. healthier, you don't have a mm-hmm. reason, but you understood you're gonna sacrifice take. Right. Um, not at all. Like, <laughs> that was a lie. It was a myth. Definitely, absolutely was. And it's like, that's like the continuing myth that still goes on to this day. To and this I day. do not know why. Girl. I'm like, listen, <laughs> people, have y'all not. I'm like, listen, everybody just share me to the world. You don't have to sacrifice on flavor. And, you oh know, I go gosh. through the things. So even when I start dipping more into the vegan world before I actually transition back to being vegan sure. and do it, I'm like, okay, I'm a, I was doing things the hard way. But I'm like, I remember doing an event and I think I had like this kale salad. I had like all plant-based things. And girl, people was like crickets. Not that it was not good. But the thing about it, it was like, I could get this from anywhere else. That's, that's their attitude. Yep. But they wanted that soul, comfort, food, comfort soul, familiar yes. food. So I was like, oh, this is what y'all do want. That either. I did she not want to be in that box. Oh either. my God. I did not. She first of all, want to be in that box either. I did not want to cook soul food. I was like, I'm not cooking soul food. Right. That I'm not doing you kind that. Of thought that was like beneath you. Oh, like, yes, yeah. I did. I was like, <laughs> it's, no, because I'm going to be like a Michelin star chef. I'm going to be doing all these gastronomics like, and all this right. stuff. Absolutely. And that's what I want to do. I want to be the food artist, all that. Um, and I didn't look at soul food like that at that time. Mm-hmm. At that time. At that time. But now I own that shit. But we're gonna talk about that too. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Can I I'm gonna ask you something right now because I, I know it's, I know it's a sensitive it's subject. Like... And it's a sensitive subject for me too, because we both fight about it online. Okay? okay. And that is when non vegan people say, Why do you want something that tastes like meat if you don't eat meat? <sighs> oh girl, that just crawls over my skin when people say that. And I, I just I mean, it's just like and I, all the time, even my sister, my sister would be like, well, I don't understand. Like, why would she make, you know, curry chicken? Like, yeah. why, why, why would she call it chicken? Or why do you call it crab cakes? Or like, and I would have to explain to her, like, it's like, how else are you going to reference it? Right. So that somebody knows what it's right. supposed to be, what it's right. replacing. Right. Or what have you. And I, and I always give the example, like, if you, if, if I knew, which I did, I took a test, one of those allergy tests and found yeah. out that sugar was something like white sugar was something I could not have. Mm. Like it, it's uh, it causes inflammation in my body. Oh wow! And I took one of those, you know, you know, food intolerance, and I was like, oh. So then I started like trying out with stevia and like Equal and other stuff, but I didn't. It wasn't because it's, it's not like I, I swore off things that tasted sweet. I still wanted things that tasted sweet. Right. I just couldn't have sugar. Right. So by the same token, if somebody is vegan, they made that decision for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean they don't want something that. 
tastes like meat <laughs> or right. that reminds them of their mom's uh, chicken or, you know. And that's the thing, because I always tell people, my biggest thing is that food is like, um, people eat, like they say you should eat to live and all that type of <laughs> stuff, but th- don't nobody do that. that. Nobody do that. Don't nobody do that. <laughs> <laughs> food is through comfort, through memories, yes. through um, uh, conversations, through um emotions. gathering emotions all yes. of that so it has something that is ties into something else so even so mm-hmm. it's like you know if you're used to eating fried chicken smothered chicken beef or all this other type of things i'm not gonna be like oh let me get some smothered cauliflower let me get you that <laughs> why right. don't you go ahead and give me that fried wheat bread like right. no nobody's gonna eat that right. Like, right. you you make it and the thing about it is, like, I not only make it look like what it's supposed to look like, but it tastes, tastes like, like it. what it looks like. And that's the thing that's different between me. I'm sorry, y'all other vegans, I don't know, I have not grasped that concept yet. Make it look like it, taste like it, and feel like it. Feel like it. The texture, okay? the All taste, of it matters. You got to have matters. all three. All you got to have all three, and that's what Joy has mastered. All three. All that's three. That's what she has mastered. Because it's like, one of the things is if I can't master all of that, I don't do it. Like, right. that's, all, that's why y'all think I got no crab leg out here yet. Not right, That's right. the only reason why I ain't got no if crab legs. Show, if she show, if I can do the taste. Now, <laughs> when you first started with mm-hmm. me, when, like mentoring and stuff, and you were coming to my events, which you know I don't, I don't have a vegan company. We make up meats and everything. But mm-hmm. Joya, it's like a little little bird just hovering around. And she's like, oh, what are you doing there? What do you do with that? And then she'll make the same dish, like whatever it was, <laughs> whatever it was, beef Wellington. We made beef Wellingtons. <laughs> She's like, hmm, okay, so then you got the little mushroom, okay, okay. And then she stored it in her head, and then, boom, vegan beef wellington <laughs> that look exactly like, tastes exactly like, what, texture exactly like. She made salmon. That's okay. That's oh, that, or, my that orange paprika salmon? Yeah, the, my, 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 my paprika salmon. It was like pretty much every signature dish I had, Joya ha- has a vegan version of it. Mm hmm. So th- it was like her way of lear- it was like her way of mm-hmm. she was learning how I did things, so she was still learning from me mm-hmm. as a chef and a cook. Yes, but obviously she's gonna. F- it was almost like a challenge to her. I'm gonna yeah. figure out how to vegan. Yeah, it. and she did it. It it'll be Every so time. funny because like like she Chef Lisa like when she was mentoring me like I I literally watched her like a hawk right. So it takes a first of all, it takes a lot for me to even engage and even be interested in somebody, first of all. And so for me to watch her, I literally watched everything. I watched her main mannerism. I watched how she spoke to people. I watched, you know, when she was in people's home. I watched when she was in dishes. I like her calm, her attitude. I watched everything, right? And I asked a lot of questions until I thought I was getting on her nerves. <laughs> and then I just keep on watching again and whatever, whatever. But um when I stepped out, not literally, because I, I feel like I, I still feel like I ain't stepped out on my own, even though I have. But I still, she has. <laughs> it's just part of the family. It's like it's part even, of family. even when I had my first private, well, first of all, when I had my first tasting event, I literally I had ten items. Probably nine of the items were Chef Lisa dishes that I totally oh, veganized. That's right. <laughs> Best event. That was your first pop up. I was hosting it. Yes. And um, your son was a DJ. Like, was yes. DJ. And it was like 10 dishes, like they're getting passed around by servers. And it was literally probably eight or nine were basically heart and soul. That's my company, heart and soul mm-hmm. dishes that were done, that were vegan. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, man, it was like, I mean, I could not have been more proud. Oh. In that moment, and that's the party at which I announced to everybody there that she that her cookbook would be out in the fall. That I had first of all, I had not even wrote, that I had not even thought about writing, I had no desire to write. I was like, she didn't even thought about the cookbook, y'all. I, I was like, who's I doing the cookbook? I announced everybody party. I said, Chef Joya's cookbook will be out this fall, and she looked at me like I had two hands. I was like. I, w- I got off the mic and I said, now you got to do it. Right. You got to do it because I said it. She put it out there that I was having a cookbook. <laughs> had no dis- I was like, whoa. And so like every couple months people were asking, when is this cookbook coming? When is this cookbook coming? They did not let it go. No. They, they grabbed onto that and they were like, when is the cookbook? Right. It wasn't coming. It was never supposed to be. <laughs> it was never supposed oh, to be. Was. Oh, but but it was. obviously it was because oh, it, it was. happened. Yep. It literally happened. She got her and- cook- I mean- 
I didn't even have a cookbook. Mm -hmm. I didn't. <laughs> I made you have one. I didn't even have one. At the time, I just at published time, my first cookbook. At the time, uh, right. it was like six months ago. <laughs> Ooh, I was like, <laughs> but that's what um, somebody. That's what. But that's true like just pushing. Is put, like you push, literally push. Won't let you. And it's like, you know, and it's like settle. you do a push, like where you're like you're pushing me to. Um, be great and be out there because I'm super shy. People don't believe that I'm shy. She is. People don't believe that I'm shy. And, and humble. <laughs> She's shy and humble. <laughs> like, she is not conceited. She is not... You might look at her and think <laughs> she thinks that she's... She is the most humble person. You know, I feel like I, like she has to be reminded, like, how good she is all the time. Yeah. Like, seriously. Yeah. Even still. With it, everything that you've accomplished it, and done. It, it, it you is. know, which is good. I mean, that's good. That's, I mean... That's just, I mean, that's that's how it is. Yeah. And it's like, it's like you push me and you make me go out there. Like, even when, I remember we have a private dinner and you was like, you was like, go introduce go, this go, course. Go announce the dish. I was like, whoa, <laughs> I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> everybody, who, everybody who has ever worked with me, like, they know that exact moment when I, I didn't even talk to them about it beforehand. I would just be like, go, go announce the dish. I was so scared. Go announce this course. And they all like deer in headlights. But until you force somebody to do it, and yeah, they don't keep, you know, yeah, it's scary. But then now it's like, it's just come up. Cause I'd be like, how do you come up with these stories? How do you do this? And and she was like, it just happens. It's real. It's, that's the thing. It's true. It's real. And I, that's the thing that I had to learn. Cause when you can associate with the dish, like even when I'm doing my own private dinners, yeah, it's a whole like spill of dee 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 dee. Everybody's engaged. That's right. Cause it's real. Like it's something it's that you can relate you can talk to. Talk about it. Like what does this mean? Or you remember when you were a kid and yeah. or whatever, wherever this is yeah. came from. And people love that because it's not just you go to a restaurant, you you can get great food in a restaurant, but you don't get the chef coming out telling his inspiration for the dish. Yeah. And, you know, if you do, if you go to a really small chef to a restaurant, you have that experience, which I have had of a okay. chef that'll come out and okay. sit at the table for you know oh. for a few minutes and like, you know, just tell me about the inspiration or something. That it's just kind of like a courtesy chef thing, you know, whatever. Um and and it just elevates the it elevates the experience. experience. Yeah. It also creates a sense of familiarity with you. Like it just breaks down this veil of like you're there and we no, like now we're all like leaned into each other. Right. And then it, it creates loyalty. Right? Absolutely. So people are gonna feel like they want to use you again and again because mm -hmm. like they connected with you, mm -hmm. not just had good food. Right. So did you learn that from your mentor? Or is that something that you learned from your people skills or just that is that I um what I, what I learned from my mentor was how to make money. Mm. Yeah. I learned how to make money. And he was, actually, he was very, um, his name is Chef Jesse Scott. He, he's up in the Raleigh-Durham area. And he's a personal, uh, private, personal private chef. He actually owns a catering company now. Okay. Um, and, and he solely did in-home private dinner parties. You know, I mean, sometimes they would, he would do rehearsals. He'd do weddings. He'd do bigger things. But he was still like a one man operation, and I was fascinated. So I would drive up to Raleigh, mm -hmm. two and a half hours away, work for free. Listen, hello. That part. That part. Work that part. For free. Wait, hold on. Wait. Okay, I'm gonna let you talk. Okay, <laughs> for free. Okay, keep my for free. For free. Keep talking. I'm gonna, I can't keep that in my mind. Right. I'm gonna keep because it because I want. I was exchanging my time. I'm giving him an extra set of hands in exchange for his knowledge, <clears> and that's a fair deal to me. You know what I mean? I'm going out there, you know, and, and I wouldn't even stay for like the, the tip handout at the end of the night. And he's like, well, you left. You didn't. I'm like, I'm not. I mean, I mm -hmm. really, I got everything I needed from tonight. Mm -hmm. I saw how he set things up. I saw how he hobnob and snooze with the guests. You know what I mean? Like he, he was very comfortable the way I was raised. I don't know if you guys ever saw that movie. Have you ever seen that movie? Um, the Butler. Yes. With uh, Forrest <clears throat> Whitaker, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know how, okay. That, I love that movie first. Yeah. Like the level of honor that they had in mm -hmm. serving like the dignitaries and the like most important people in the world, right? Mm -hmm. The president and all the people that would come to state dinners, et cetera. But there's all, there was always a line, right? And the same thing with us in our slave history, right? Yep. You're there and you're serving, but there's a line. There's like a, there's, there's y'all and then there's us. Like we don't listen to your conversations. We don't comment on anything. Nope. Like it's almost like we just blend in. We're just here to serve. And so that's kind of the mentality that I had going into this, knowing the type of clientele that I was going after, 
because I still had that mindset of, you know, I'm I'm in the background. I'm here in a domestic capacity in a mm-hmm. sense and to keep this wall. But what Jesse taught me was, <clears throat> and he taught me about the business, how to charge, how to, he taught me all the stuff about like, you know, full pan fees, 40 fee, you know, well, full pan fee, 40 white people. And, Wait, I hope I didn't blow a speaker. <laughs> wait, hold a minute. I didn't say I don't blow a speaker. <laughs> Rewind. Because listen, there is a difference. No, okay. Seriously, he really taught me no, that like that. It's a little serious. Like a full, I learned full that the food. hard way. The full pan of food. You know, full pan, let's say, of chicken serves 40 people. He said, but hey, <laughs> 25 black people. That part. That's real. Though. I, ooh, I wish I had that. That's knowledge. real. Ooh, I needed that knowledge That's this past all the summer, honey. He gave me, but he also showed me that there didn't need to be this wall between me and the client that I yeah. could break that wall and I could converse with them and I could, and they wanted that. Okay, so you thought that you had to be like this, the stoic, butler mentality, like this very mentality, stoic, but intense figure, you know, just stay super professional, uh, which I am professional. I just had to change in my brain what that meant. Yes, you know, yes. that it's okay to be. I remember one of my in-home private chef clients told me once that he was scared of me. He said, oh. he said, when I, he said I was just, you're so intense. Mm-hmm. And that also stuck it's in my so brain. Serious. That, you know, it, it just stuck in my brain that, like, why am I so, you know. And so I just loosened up and just started being really personable. And that's when, like, other things really start taking off. Yeah. Too, um, just when I learned that lesson. So. So I don't remember what the was original question was, too. but my mentor taught me business and and he just taught me that wall could be broken. But you know, I'm I am a Leo, I'm gregarious, I like to talk to people, you know. Yeah. Um I used to be in like those I don't know if y'all had these up in uh oh you were from Milwaukee, right? Yes. I don't know if y'all had these growing up in school, but we used to have these oratorical contests. Uh uh-huh. like where you, you give a speech. Yeah. You could like win a, like win the time. So I used to enter those all the time. So I kinda you know, oh, like, so you so, love that. So, yeah, I, I didn't mind. I never was in a debate club, but anything where I got to speak. <laughs> you were here for it. I was there for it. There you know what I mean? It. So, that, you know, it's kind of a natural ability, I guess you'd say. That, I don't remember the original question either, but this conversation was good. So, we're going to keep it going. <laughs> like, and that's like, I was scared of her too, honey. I ain't going to even lie. <laughs> I have relaxed a lot in the last. You, five oh my years, gosh, so she has. I've relaxed a lot. This is my podcast, so I get to say what I want. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot from... I used to have colorful hair. I, I think she wasn't too sure about it. <laughs> oh, this is a good topic. Oh, I'm so glad you brought this up. If you taught me. Yes. I learned so much from the ladies. I always say my girls. It's like I'm a madam or something. But, uh, but I learned so much from the women who worked with me, worked for me, worked mm-hmm. as inter- been interns or that I've mentored. I've learned so <clears> much <throat> from them because I'm I'm teaching them from my standpoint and I'm you know, I'm trying to instill this this sense of excellence and also this this whole idea of perfection too. Mm-hmm. I would always I would never say perfection, but the way I carry myself, people knew that I expected perfection. Absolutely. And that's really not a good thing to be in that mindset where you feel like you have to be a perfectionist. So I've learned and I learned from you and a couple of my other uh I mean, I learned something about relaxing I learned from you because I wouldn't really fight you on your look. On your hair, on your nails. Yep. <laughs> um, primarily the nails. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, I'm putting no gloves, chef. <laughs> yeah, she would, and I'd be like, it's just, it's the, it's the, it's the image, it's the look of it, and and everybody loved me, and everybody loved her anyway. <laughs> it didn't matter. So you taught, you taught me that, you know, you can still be yourself, be authentic to who you are and your personality. Like you were just kind of like, I'm gonna be unapologetically me, mm-hmm. and like, and you served yourself, yeah, and served your whole business and everything because of that. Mm-hmm. You know, had you listened to me on that point and like changed who you were, you know, you wouldn't have been, you probably would have been happy, right? And you and you and you may not even have the success that you had. So I definitely, I mean, you taught me that. Okay, you know, I need to relax because I'm. I have these this old school, right? You know, like my parents were just super, like, you know. But I mean, I get it, and it's just like the thing about it though is that like I know you were mentioning to me, and I like I was never like disrespectful, so no, like never. I, I still got a picture that comes up in my phone. I had like this literally unicorn hair, and I was working on a private dinner for you, but I had it pulled back. It was like in a neat bun, but it was like three or four different colors. 
And I'm just have the biggest, cheesiest smile. Mm -hmm. But I always made sure that my service was great. And this was a dinner that she she wasn't with me. Like, I would do the dinners, captain the dinner yeah, yeah. by myself. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't with me. And it was like, I still provided excellent service. So, yeah. yeah, they love me. And the thing, I got rave reviews. Yep. And so the thing about me is, like, no matter what I look like or whatever, because I was always presentable. It was never that I was not presentable. She was always presentable. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, you always... Change it back. You had no chef code. I mean, right. I, mean, I had I no chef like, code on. I, mean, I was glamour girl because you know I was glamour girled up, and but it was like I still was able to get the job done, be personable, and be rememberable, and still get a good review and for be the company, her, still and be still be herself. myself, right? And still be myself, still be herself, and get everything done. So, so I'm really proud of you for that. Yeah, <laughs> look, I done taught her something. That's now. real. Like that's really real. And I mean, I've learned it from. You know, I have some 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 girls that you know, kind of like from the hood. You know, what I'm yes. saying they don't necessarily speak. You know, what I'm saying the proper way and like everything. Yo. And you know, and I I I am like, you know, I'm the, <laughs> I'm the grammar Nazi. I'm like, you better speak right. You better. You can't just say that to people. You know. And one of my little one of my one of my little North Charlotte girl, y'all. I know y'all all over the country, but it's like you know, it's like the hood. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What and and. She literally gets the best reviews out of all the chefs on the And it's so team. funny because I, I remember when I first met her, I was like, ooh, she woof. Right, you're right. I was like, woof. You're like, woof. Because I, I literally would tell her, like, I'm not going to, you're not going to be able to captain events. So you're not going to be able, I can't put you in front of my customers. I would tell her that. Oh, like, no. And so she has changed. Like, she's, she's polished. Right. And she knew it, though. She said, I want to be polished. Oh. And I want, I want, I just need you to mentor me. So she has become polished. But she's still herself. Yeah. Okay. She's still herself. She got a looks like it was almost like we met, just kind of met in the middle. And so she might say some things that make me cringe a little bit, <laughs> of, you know, but, but not inappropriate. I mean, she's still being herself and customers love her and she has the best reviews. Mm -hmm. So th these girls teach me all the time that, you know, I, yeah, I can just kind of loosen up a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you know what? Let me dive into this question because this. I have questions of my own, but then I know some of you all, a lot of you all reached out to me. Y'all had a lot of questions for Chef Lisa. But um, one of the ones was, da, 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 da. why do you teach others? And the reason I brought that up is because you're speaking on the girls. So what mm -hmm. makes you teach others? Oh, well, um, I, in a, my short answer is legacy. Um, oh, you talked to me about that. Um, talk to the people about the I legacy. Will. Um, what, whatever I accomplish with my own two hands, it's like, yay, you did that, and that dies with me when I die. Yeah. Right. When you teach somebody else to create, and you teach twelve, and then it becomes, you know, twenty-four, and it becomes a hundred, hundred twenty-four, then I, that's a legacy that you leave behind. Like your your talent and your skills, like what are they for if they're only for you? Right. If you don't. Share mm -hmm. them, and you don't. But by me sharing, it's like I'm multi. It's almost like I'm multiplying myself in a sense. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like the gift. The gift is being multiplied. Not me, but the gift itself is being multiplied, and it's. And so now you know people all over the country can get this type of service or what you know what I mean. So, to me, teaching, having had mentorship, um, and realizing how much time it cuts away from just your learning curve and you know, your ability to get up to you know the level you want to get it's just invaluable so i mean it would be crazy for me i think i feel like responsibility to mentor um and teach people and because i'm very confident in my own abilities not only my own abilities but i'm also if you can tell from early conversation i'm super spiritual i'm super like god driven mm -hmm. and so i'm very confident <clears throat> And the fact that God provides for me and that I have what I need and I will always have what I need. So I'm not afraid to share information, recipes, website look. Cause I tell people when I mentor my students um, all around the country that take my personal chef courses, go to my website, look at how, like, literally, you could actually almost copy the verbiage and just Listen, and to make this it. day, to okay, this day. to this day, <laughs> to this day. Cause I don't do a lot of in home things like that anymore or meal prep. If I go copy and paste Chef Lisa chart, these are my prices for certain things. Cause to the day I for do real. that, I, I, I literally do that. She will text me and be like, "Do you have a thing 
for do you have like a like like show me like do you have something for like a I don't know family style dinner and I'm like hey, and she sometimes no. she be trying to make me think but I'm like listen I'm not doing I that right now. Like it's not gonna take away from me. No, and I wish people would not hoard information or or feel like <clears throat> you know if you if you hold on so tight to what you have. Your, your hands are closed and you can't receive anything. Which is the craziest thing. And I, I am interrupting. I'm sorry. I'm no, 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 no. You, but it's the craziest thing because that's what I went through before. I was trying to find mentors before you. Um, you know, it was like other women mentors and men mentors. That's a whole totally different well, story. Really oh, is. Lord. It really um, is. But it's like then I came and found you and then like, you know, we connected. But it's like everybody feels like somebody's trying to take something from them. And it's like, I even try to, you know, help other chefs or things of that nature. But it's just like, have you ever, let me ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever helped someone mentorship wise or thought about, and they've been, this little catty, been a little disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Has that ever happened with you before? Never. See, she's awesome. It's never happened. I have shared everything. I don't know how many women have co- people, not just women. I mean, that's kind of what it turned into. But I've, I've had male chefs, um, mm-hmm. white, black, women, men, um, work with me through these years. And um, I literally could call any one of them to this day yeah. and say, hey, could you help me out? with?" Some-? And they would do it in a heartbeat. I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of like, um, I mean, I've been fortunate. You know, you have a lot of good, like the thing about it, you have so many like great people around you. And I think you have like this, what they call, I'd have to learn this word only a couple years ago, discernment. Yeah. I didn't grow up in the church, whatever. I'm <laughs> like the the glitter bug butterfly that did not, don't have any discernment, but I'm working on it. I I do. So don't you try do. me. You do. Yeah. Don't yeah, try yeah, me. You I do. do. Um, you might call it something different. Right. Yeah, so like it's, it's that I... I know you have people that work with you that, you know, you don't work with anymore and uh-huh. that, that you have elevated or anything of that nature, uh-huh. everything of that nature. But it's like, has it, um, you've always seen to have like a really great team around you. Yeah. Like, so when people ask for mentorships, are you always like, yes, I'll mentor you. Or is it like, uh, let me, let me fill it out. Well, like, how much, do you do that? I mean, people will weed themselves out if they don't have like the work ethic or whatever it is. Like they'll weed themselves out. Yeah. Cause I mean, I'll take, I'll, I'll pretty much, my door is open. Cause again, all my internships are unpaid. Yeah. Right. Right. Because I'm going to pour into you everything I know mm-hmm. and that's valuable. Yep. So I'm not going to pay you to take my, you know, to, I'm not going to pay you <laughs> to teach you. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. You know, when you, when, when if any students out here, if you, if you go to get a paid internship somewhere, they're going to want, they're going to want production out of you. They're not going to be, they're all just thinking about you in their pocket. So, mm. you know, so it's like, gosh, I'm about to run over here and meet with the farm, you know, with the farmer. I would take this intern with me, but I got to pay him. You know what I mean? So okay. I'm not going to take him with me. I would take him to go meet with the supplier or I guess what I'm, I'm going to do a TV interview. I would ask him to come along so I could see that part of it. But if I'm always thinking about it's costing me money. Yeah. But see, because my interns, are, and it's like six months. I mean, it's like yeah. six months, three, three to six months of, of unpaid internship. You know, they get to see everything. Come they go. Do. Come, come with me to this part. Come do this. Oh, we're doing this type of thing. And it's like come you make, can't even put a price on it. Come do, like, come do whatever. Come see it all. Right? Because, um, but I think just I have a level of respect and honor and, and grace. And I just feel like. You know, if you're really good to people, you really care about them. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like it's just going to be reciprocated. But there have been some people who, you know, mm-hmm. weeded themselves out. Yeah. Because, it, it, like, I get the question all the time. Can you mentor me? Can you do this? Can you do that? And, you know, I'm like, yeah. But then it's like, when I hear, like, a message, or I'm like, okay, so you don't have the same work ethic as me. So I kind of, like, just... So, I don't ignore them. It's just like you not built like me. So right. I don't know how to right. operate and work with somebody who's not like exactly. driven like that. But you also can probably tie that back now to you asking me to make like that whole experience. And a lot of people will, t- have this, will tell you they had to call me 10 times or email me <laughs> 15 times or whatever the case may be. But that persistence, yeah, the persistence in and of itself prove something about that person. Right. I'm not saying I do that intentionally. I'm just saying it's 
I'm just busy or whatever. But right. when someone's persistent and they keep, it's like, okay, this person is really driven. Right. You know, this person is really persistent and they're, okay, let me turn and give you my full attention. Now. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And um, so that, there's something to be said for that, right? Yeah. Because you can turn and give somebody your full attention mm-hmm. and realize they just BS. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, you probably have a little more understanding of. I, I do now. Like I say, I say that all the time. I was <laughs> like, I see why Chef Lisa ignored me for about a year because <laughs> a lot of people, some people are like, oh, Chef, I want to do this. Oh, I'm serious. Can you mentor me? Can you just do-? like little Bert Lowe. They're just picking. They're just picking, And I'm like, picking. what are you doing? Like, right. you, like okay, so, just say that, what you really there's want. People who, there's people who want you to do it for them, right? Mm-mm. If you're seeking something from somebody, you know, knowledge particularly, you want to be mentored in anything. It doesn't matter what field you guys are in, um, whatever it is. You should want you're, to. You're seeking mentorship of whatever it is. You're the person that has to show up. You're the person that has to give. If You're the person that has to, like, it's your responsibility to obtain, in my opinion, mm-hmm. what you need. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Um, like, if you're just going to sit down and like, well, you didn't give it to me, so I didn't. Get... No, that's not how that works. You know what I mean? Like, you have got to be the one pursuing Mm-hmm. actively and passionately pursuing the thing that you want uh, from that that person and respect their time. Yep. You know, I've, I've met with people, billionaires, right? Like, I, when I, I wanted to, I was looking at doing that venue space and I met, I caught, I remember one of my former clients was a, was a, was a, um, a commercial builder, right? Oh. Millionaire. You know, this guy's probably a billionaire. I don't know. He's super. And I was like, oh, I remember him you know, talking about him being a commercial. So I called him up. You know, I've done a couple of dinners from the past and I said, I would love to take you to lunch, you know, and just ask you a few questions. He was like, mm. sure, of course, you know, whatever. So made the date, stuck to the date, showed up early, got us a table. You know, he sat down. I had myself organized with exactly what I wanted to know. I wasn't just, you know, we had some small talk and then I went into the business. To this, 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 this. I showed him I'd already done some research. And this is just where my roadblocks are. Can you help me with these? And he answered my questions in a maybe a 90-minute lunch. You know, of course, I paid for that lunch. Actually, mm-hmm. I didn't. He insisted to pay, but, right. but obviously. You were prepared I, to pay. I was, <laughs> of course, I should pay, right? I right. Lunch. He, he ended up insisting. But, um, but the point is that I pursued him, but I was prepared. I did not want to waste his time, mm-hmm. you know? If I got ninety minutes with you, I need to get what it is. And he and he was just gracious. Oh, and call me again, you know. But I, I was respectful of his time. So yeah, I think you just have to know how to navigate um, and you know be prepared to get the information if you're seeking it. Yeah, absolutely. Like you show up to my house mm-hmm. and you don't have a pen, paper, a notepad. Oh my gosh, chef. Okay. Like what? Like what? Okay, do you keep any of the vision boards that you used to draw for us? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. Uh, so I know you move. Oh, my gosh. I draw stuff out all the time. I know, but I remember you had your office. Mm-hmm. And you had, like, the vision. I remember I was saying, I want to do this and that. And you drew it out and we were talking. I'm like, <laughs> do you still have that or you don't know? I probably don't. Oh, my god. I probably don't. Um it's we like can, we uh, can draw a new one. It's kinda like a um um somebody who who was like a consultant with me and a good friend of mine, um, he would call it a dream dive. Okay. Where it's just like just just close like don't think about what you should be doing, what you're supposed to be. Yeah. Just get in touch with what is it that you want and mm. why. Yeah. What does it make you feel like? And what does that look like? What does your ideal day look like? And mm. you know, and so you could not think, well, this is what I should be doing. Mm. You can really get in touch with what is it you really want right. to be like. What your sweet spot really is. All right. That is true. Mm. That is true. Okay, so oh my gosh, so many more questions that actually I feel like listen, y'all are <laughs> here with us today, baby. Right. Listen, this ain't a 20 minute Joy podcast because Joy ain't just talking to herself. And I know y'all interested because I am still interested. You still got the energy, you good? I am good. Child. Yes, we are great. All right. So, let me ask you, let me see if I want to ask you one of the questions. Okay. One of the questions that um, one of my joy birds, because I don't like to call people followers or fans, so they're joy, joy birds. birds. 
words. Those are your words. That's right. Um, they asked, what do you describe as someone having the it factor? Ooh, that is a good question. Let me wow. scratch it off so I don't yeah, come back over. Questions. Obviously, talent <clears throat> of whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Like raw talent um, and passion. Mm-hmm. See, passion. You can teach somebody skill. You can't teach people passion. Mm-mm. I can I can show you how to do something like a million times. If it's not in you, if it's not if it doesn't make you leap with joy to do it, and you're not gonna be, you right. it's not gonna be, you're never gonna be over mediocre at it. Mm-hmm. You know, so so to be somebody who's talented in something that they're also passionate about, um, I think that to me is the equation for like the it factor. Mm-hmm. You have the God given talent or the gift that's inside you, that's born inside you, and you're passionate about that thing. Okay. Um, yeah, and you want to share it. And you want to share it. You, you can't be close handed. Right. And you because want to share it. And so many people don't want to share anything or don't want to say anything because they always feel like somebody's going to take something from them. And I, I, I tell people this all the time. Chef Lisa taught me that a long time ago mm-hmm. because I was so curious as why she wanted to share so much with me because I never had that experience before. And I've been looking for mentors and all of that. And they run like that. And I'm like, she's like, you can't take nothing from me. That's me for me. And I love that. Mm-hmm. And that's like, it's so many different things. That's one of the things that made me attached to her. And it's like, yes, I learned the things that she was doing. I knew how to cook, but she was in a different element. And so it was like, even with me recreating those things that I see you do, I wanted to make sure that I've always paid homage. It was like, kind of like my thank you for opening your, up your arms mm-hmm. and showing me. And so it's like, I'm always like constantly throwing it back at you her whenever I can. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. Is it overwhelming? I'm no, sorry. no, no, no. Of course it's. <laughs> Of course, I mean, obviously that feels good, but I'm just like, I mean, I, I hope it doesn't feel like obligatory. Like, I don't expect you to constantly, like, no, I just feel like, but, but, but I know it's genuine. Yeah. That's <laughs> why, I mean, what am I going to say? I know. That's genuinely your heart to, to, yeah. to always try and say that. And, um, so, I mean, I, I mean, it just is what it is. Like, like we, I find myself lift, trying to sometimes not try to say your name. We lift I don't... each other, we lift <laughs> each other up. I think that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. I think it's just not enough of that, to be honest. Yeah. Because um, I'm like, I'm forever thankful, grateful, because I'm always appreciative. It's like, it's like, because like, no matter where I am or where I started and how I'm growing and going, it's like, just at those times when I didn't have that, or even when I'm mm-hmm. trying it, and I could always call you for anything, like anything to this day. That's true. Anything. You know, if I feel like I'm getting on your nerves. I'm like, I'm still going to go learn anyways. <laughs> it's like, I'm just grateful that I actually have the chance to do that. And it's like, okay, because so, so, a lot of people say I'm self-made. I did this. I did that. Especially in the entrepreneur world. And I'm like, yo, no, I got a whole support a whole behind village, me. Right? right, I got a whole everything <laughs> behind me. And it's like, you don't know who everybody is. Like, we all, <laughs> like, this is this is who it is. This is who, this is. Right yeah, here at every time. <laughs> it was evident at this last weekend's festival. Yeah. Like half the crowd was like Shh, there for joy. That it was so beautiful. Like I was like, I know my family was there. Yeah, then was people like, off of like my Instagram and Facebook, TikTok came out. Like, and I was like, was like, oh my gosh. Like, that was, yeah. That was super that's special. That was that's that special. was dope. Like yeah, very. That was that was, that was that was a good day. That was <laughs> that was a good day. <laughs> and I seen the video so later because I felt like I thought people was like, oh, I don't know, somebody was getting annoyed about me sharing, but I was gonna keep sharing all these moments because it was so many moments that people captured. Yeah. From like my friends, family, the actual event, and then I seen your live. Like I know you said you you went live, but I tuned out. Like I yeah, heard course. you, yeah, but I did not hear judgment. you. Right. That was the point they were about to announce a judgment. You were just kind of. And I was like, just say hi. <laughs> like, I was like, hello. <laughs> hello. It was cool to see because I saw, like, you kind of put, it was like different views from different people, people who had cameras. Like, you, so it's, like, it was all crazy, views. all these different views. And yeah. then it was like, at one point I was like, let me stop tagging you because. <laughs> I was like, and then it was it's like. more content from me. I know, right. <laughs> Listen, that it's part. Oh, we're going into the content conversation in just a moment. Yeah. But it was amazing and it was like that was fun man yes wait we gonna pause real quick because i gotta get my charger hold this thought we gonna keep recording i'll be right back 
Thank you for listening to the Plant Girl Magic Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and tell a friend to tell a friend. Join our community over on Instagram at Cook It With Joya. And be sure to subscribe to YouTube, Say What is Vegan, for new recipe videos every month. Your questions are welcome, so leave me a comment or send me a DM. To shop my cookbooks and the best seasoned blends you ever had, visit ChefJoyousNest.com. Girl, just head on over to my show notes. All the links are there. I'll see you in the next episode, Joybirds. Birds.